Hey guys, and welcome back. It's Grant Brogy from The Strength Co. And today we're gonna answer an important question. If you could only do one barbell lift, what would it be? If you like the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. To say that I get asked this question all the time would be a lie, and I'm not here to lie to you, but this topic does come up a good bit, and people like to talk about what is the best barbell lift? What is the best use of your time in the gym? It's an interesting topic, so here are my thoughts. So what do we talk about a lot in this channel? We talk about the program starting strength, and the reason we talk about the program starting strength is because it's so effective, because of the criteria that we use when we pick barbell lifts. If you've come to one of my intro to barbells or seen me coach at a starting strength seminar, what do we tell you? We tell you that when you're picking exercises doing the gym, you follow these three rules. Most muscle mass, longest effective range of motion, and things that allow you to add more weight. That is how we choose the lifts and end up where do we end up. And where do you end up? Well, you end up on four to five basic exercises. The squat, the press, or a lot of people will call the overhead press, pressing the barbell up over your head, the bench press, and the deadlift. And for younger athletic people or people with no issues, also the power clean is useful. And we pick those lifts because they train your entire body. They train all of you at once. On the squat, you put the bar on the back, you're working your back. You grasp it with your hands, you're working your arms. You squat it down to parallel. You're using your hamstrings, your quads, your abs. Yes, your abs are working really hard because if you're not using your abs, then your back's moving around. Your entire body is used as you go down and you come up. That's important because remember, we don't train muscle groups, we train movement patterns. We train our body as it treats us in everyday life. When you interact with your surroundings, it is your muscles moving your bones around. So you want to train all of them. So the squat, super useful. What's the next one? The overhead press. The overhead press has the longest kinetic chain of all of the movements. Your feet are on the ground, you're pressing the bar up overhead, the weight ends up the furthest from you that it will in all of these movements. You have to stabilize it with your abs, you have to focus to keep the bar close to your face so that you can actually press it overhead. Your quads are working, you don't wanna bend your knees, your calves are working, it's a long movement when it comes to weight locked out compared to where your feet are and your entire body is utilized. Because of all of these things, the press is where people get the most frustrated. It's the lowest number usually in people's lifts. And I say usually, I mean 99.9% .9 of the time because it's they have to press it the furthest distance and the most things have to happen correctly in order to be able to lift the weight. Whereas with the bench press, I'm able to lift a lot more. And the reason is because you're laying down on a bench. The bench is supported by the bench, the bench press. I mean, that's it's there and it's helping you. In the press, no one helps you. It's just you and God and that iron on the barbell. In the bench press, you get to lay down. This is why people love it. Plus, it's way cooler to say, how much you bench, bro? But yet again, the bench press has a lot of value. You lower the bar down, eccentric range of motion. We covered this in the soreness video. You press it back up. If you're intelligent, your butt cheeks are on the bench and you're driving your legs, incorporating your lower body. It is still a whole body exercise. And because of the fact you're supported by the bench, you're able to lift a lot of weight and thus get stronger. And then you have the deadlift, the simplest of all of the exercises to learn. You bend at the waist, you grab the bar, you drop your shins in, you pull your chest up and make your back flat, and you stand up with the barbell. There's not a lot going on. You just Pick something up off the floor, something that you do in everyday life. If you're doing it correctly, you're driving your feet into the floor as you start, utilizing your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings, your adductors, your arms are holding onto the bar. They're like chains that lock you in. As you bring the bar above the knee, your low back, your lats, all of this starts to work. It's another great full body exercise. And then lastly, you have the power clean, another great movement. It's the deadlift setup, slightly wider grip, force times distance over time. You're displaying your strength quickly. So you pull the thing to mid thigh and then you slam it up to your shoulders utilizing a jump. We have a few power clean videos, go look at it. But again, another great 
full body exercise. So you're watching right now and you're saying, cool, Grant, I should do them all, right? Yes, you should. But if you could only do one, what should you do? The answer to that is not so simple and it really depends. I'm gonna answer it from two vantage points. What is the only lift I would do and what is the only lift that I would recommend? And I'm gonna start with what is the only lift that I would recommend and 100% without a doubt, I think for most people, it's the deadlift. And the reason I think it's the deadlift is because it's the lowest barrier to entry. We already know that people don't like lifting weights. We already know that most people have never even thought about lifting barbells. So if they decide to do it, there comes a whole list of things that they have to do. If they want to squat, they have to have a squat rack. If they want to power clean the flooring and the type of plates by our bumpers, come into consideration. If they want to bench press, they have to have a rack and a bench. There's a lot of things. The deadlift, you only need the bare minimum. You only need the most minimalist of equipment. You need a bar, but it could even be a short bar. It could be a lighter bar. You have options there and you need a load and you need a place to set up and deadlift. So if I was getting someone that was hesitant to start lifting or I wasn't sure if they were going to do it, I would tell them, Start with the deadlift. Get what you need just for the deadlift. Worst case scenario, you never do it. it sits in your garage and strength co plates are like Bitcoin. They're just pumping to the moon and you can resell it later if you don't use it. But if you do use it, you will get strong. So you can deadlift anywhere. You can deadlift in a field, a meadow. I've proved it. Watch the Discovery deadlift guy. He deadlifts all over the country. But the deadlift is the easiest and lowest entry point to start lifting. It's like it's like your Dogecoin. It's, it's almost free. Just go do it. You'll be glad you did. So it's the end of the world. The apocalypse. Tesla cars don't work anymore. You got to get back on your horse and use gasoline. And you have your AR-15 and your pepper spray and four MREs in the trunk. And you're like, what am I packing? Well, you're not packing the squat rack, buddy. You're grabbing a barbell on some plates so that you can take care of yourself and fight the bad guys. But what is Grant like? What's the one lift that Grant would do? Well, I would say I'm probably a better squatter than a deadlifter, so I'd say the squat. But in reality, in terms of that feeling, and we don't go off feelings, but feeling like you had a great workout, that, that work, the most bang for your buck is gonna be the squat because you got a heavy load in your back and the second you unrack it, you are working. You got to write it down and you got to pull it up. And the deadlift, all of you, you guys do it all the time. You've been at the waist, you grab the bar and you spend the next nine minutes pumping your shins back and forth and thinking about deadlifting. You walk that squat out, you are working. But the problem with the squat, and it's not a problem, it's a feature, not a bug, is that you need a squat rack. You need a way to bring it out. Yes, I know, you crazy, barefoot, no seed oil people. Oh, you could pick the bar up. Grab it, press it overhead, put it back. I get it. But if you want to lift heavy, you need a rack. You need something that helps you. So if I only had one thing and I'm packing for the apocalypse, my truck has a trailer and there's a squat rack inside. But for most people, the deadlift is the one lift that I would recommend for the most bang for your buck. Hope this video helps. If it does, like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.